Here's my top three reasons you do not hit the ball as far as you should with your driver and why you hit your driver so short. If you're looking to play better golf, hit the ball further and straighter for lots of people, we need to get you maximizing what you're putting down there so you don't feel like you have to do too much up here. Let's show you what I mean. So maximizing what you get out of what you put in is really what we're talking about here. For lots of people, when I say, I wanna get you hitting the ball further, they think purely of swinging only out of their boots and then that leads in their heads of being out of control, being less accurate with your driver. What I'm talking about here is gonna make you more consistent with your driver, more accurate with your driver, and max out what you put in. If you aren't near to maxing out what you're putting in, you are wasting so much energy out on the golf course. Remember, if you like the messages in these videos, hit that like button down below. You can subscribe to the channel. I have a free weekly newsletter link down below as well if you want to subscribe to more free golf tips, as well as when you're down there, look at all the affiliate links. If you're looking at buying any of those products, you want to support the channel, use those links, you'll get the best price. So let's talk about one, the first reason people do not maximize out what they put in. Um, let's see if I can explain that in this shot. We've got shot number one, which we'll talk about, and here's shot number two, doing a very common fault. <sighs> we'll see if I've pulled it off. So I've missed target, which is expected, but let's just look at the numbers on that one. So 162 ball speed to 156 on the second shot. Now, the first point we're gonna talk about here is loft, 14 degrees loft, and this is X loft. And when I look at my quad here, it's actually telling me it's up near 20 degrees of loft. So I've gone from around 15 degrees of loft on the first one delivered to 20 degrees of loft on the second one. By adding loft as I hit the ball, that's simply going to increase deflection, so like a wedge shot, which will reduce ball speed. And often, if not controlled, can increase curvature. So that last shot carried 233 with 108 mile an hour uh, club head speed. 108 mile an hour club head speed with some more realistic loft should be delivering more. So that's 105 club head speed, so slower, and that's carried 256 yards. Think about that. I've actually swung slower, but because my delivery was more efficient, just simply on the loft number there as one of the points, that ball's gone further. I'm maxing out what I put in. Lots of golfers will simply go faster and faster because they want to hit it further. But if you're not controlling the loft, you could actually find bigger gains by doing it at the speed you're doing it at, maxing it out. So how do you control loft? This is such a common problem with drivers. So the first thing people go to is the driver and the neck and the loft on the head. They think that's going to make the difference. Unfortunately, and this is where one of the biggest golf kind of you fill in the blank word there, starts with a C. Uh, in custom fitting, can really work on the custom fitter's benefit. So let's say I've got a 10 degree loft driver and they give me a seven degree loft driver and that reduces my loft and it goes further. What happens is that player goes, oh, I had the wrong loft, great, I'm now hitting it further. But from my experience of then teaching those people over time who've gone for fittings, they come for fittings, and they just default back to the loft that they originally wanted to deliver because that's where they want to be. They don't change the fundamental issue of presenting loft, they change this, and then in time, at three degrees, they just override it. I changed the loft there by over five degrees, which hardly any loft changes. If anyone's going for a custom fit and their loft's been changed five degrees, I would be shocked. So why do golfers have this kind of tendency to want to increase so much loft with their driver? Bearing in mind, I've got an 8.5 degree driver here, 9.5 and it's slightly lower on the neck. Um, I'm presenting 15. So you do add loft, it's just amateurs are adding a lot of loft. And it's to do with controlling this angle, the face runaway. The more that face turns up to the sky, the more at the top of the backswing, the face points down to the ground, the more chances they come down into the ball, they won't have control of that face pointing up to the sky. And then to hit the ball, they've got to really flip it forwards to get the face somehow pointing where they want the ball to start. And there's the load of loft, where with the stronger players in the world, they're generally turning that face more down to the ground, which allows them to present better loft angles with another angle, which we're going to come to in point two. So get control of loft. Number one point for getting control of loft, you've got to check your grip. Is your grip turned over enough? Are you too weak? Which in turn will present loft. Number point number one, let's check your grip. Point number two, are you sneaking the ball position miles forward to try and encourage you to actually get the face squaring up in time because you're not controlling the loft? Let's make sure the ball position with your driver is somewhere between middle of your lead foot to say two inches inside your lead foot and try somewhere you push it back to 
inside your lead foot and see what happens to your loft presentation because if it comes out lower and you maximize the mid-ball, that's a good thing. And number three, have your awareness of the club face. So as it moves around your body, can you feel that face turning to the ground? Simple little drill. If you've got your grip and your setup in place, this is funny, people don't like this drill because it's like hard to do, but you want to give it a practice. Just simply take the club to around first parallel, turn that club as much down to the ground as you can. You don't want to be too crazy, but a good amount. And then just try and chip a few balls out in front of you. And you want that kind of low hooky flight coming out. That's you presenting not an off loft for the speed you swing at on that small swing and the ball will kind of dip out of the air. It's going left because de-lofting often makes that face point a little bit left of the path. Great drill for practicing. Next time you're at the range, just pitch a few out with your driver, trying to get that ball to kind of dip low out of the air to get used to actually presenting a different loft and start maximizing rather than just leaking power left, right, and center. Point number two, the second swing where I swung and it didn't go very far and I presented loads of loft also hit down at the ball. Yeah, that's crazy. This one blows people's heads off. So basically the one where I didn't max out my distance, I hit down while presenting loft, which is double deflections, more loft, more deflection. Glancing blow on the way down. So not on the angle I want to launch that ball. Again, is a deflection. Think of deflections like if I was going to drive my car at a wall, so you're the wall, if I'm going at 30 miles an hour and I drive straight at you, it's not going to be very nice. But if I drive at 30 miles an hour at you and I come at you from an extreme angle, it's not going to be nice, but there's more chance I'm going to brush off that wall. I'm kind of going to glide off it. There's deflection. We need you driving straight at this ball. Now, bearing in mind this ball wants to launch, we want you going up on that vector a bit more to max out while delivering better loft. Most amateurs, so common, hitting down, presenting loft, it's just a huge power leak. So four down on the weaker one where I swung quite hard and it didn't go anywhere. The one where I hit it quite average, like I was slower with my club head speed, but I went up at the ball with loft or less loft. Um, really went out there, like what it carried, what, 10, 15 yards further, and I swung it slower. So how can we get you feeling like you're trying to hit up at the ball? Point number one for that, well, you can try. Forget lag. So many golfers talk about lag and holding on to this angle. Hold it on, hold it on, hold it on, hold it on. Guess what this does? Keeps the club up in the air, hands go low. There's gonna be a crash. It's gonna be the club as it moves down. It's gonna to to violently get down to the ball. We want that gone. You need to be trying to get that club down to the ground earlier so you can actually come up at that ball and stripe it away. And I know this one blows people's heads off. This angle is so confusing for so many golfers, but you need to feel at the top of your backswing like you're actually starting to take this angle out. Don't hold on to it forever. So what the world's best players do is they add a tiny bit as they pull down and then they're very quick to start taking it out. So from about here, they start taking this angle out to get ready to deliver that club. And for most amateurs, when I ask them to take angles away, they think, well, that's gonna be worse. I'm gonna be weaker. Two things happen. One, they tend to drop the club more on this path rather than going this way, because people who hold on to the angle and turn tend to come out this way with the club stuffed up in the air. So A, their path gets better as they throw those angles away, which can help for more maxing out of distance. And two, they get the club down to the ground a little earlier, which allows them then to hit level or to up at that ball, and there is the distance. Hitting loads of speed, adding loft, hitting down, is gonna be so weak compared to you trying to hit up while presenting a more reasonable loft to max out your distance. Point number three, and this one is game-changing for so many golfers. You have to change your intent. The amount of golfers that say to me they need to slow down, they need to slow it down and then they'll play better. You don't, you need to change your intent. If you wanna max out what you're putting in, trying to put a bit more in with those better angles now, we've got better loft, we're hitting up at the ball, not down, now we need some intent with this driver. The amount of golfers I see who make these kind of pretty actions with the driver and the ball just falls out in the air because they haven't got the speed to keep it going up. It's 
ridiculous how many. We need some good intent, some commitment to speed, some commitment to try and send that ball a bit further with your maxed out angles, and then in turn, you trying to push your body that bit further. Now, the best way to change your intent is get in a safe space, a range, a net, a sim, wherever your safe space is where shots can be devalued. We want them devalued down to zero, meaning if you top it, you slice it, you hook it, it doesn't matter. The object in your safe area is actually to start overtraining speed. So I want you to start doing a few swings where you turn your body as far as you feel you can turn it. I want you to feel like you're pulling on that club as fast as you can. And hitting shots, not how you will play, but with full intent. And I want you to see what the difference is between your top intent shots compared to the shots that you play on the course. So if you have access to any launch monitor, top trace or whatever, you can measure the difference. If you're at a range, you're gonna be able to hopefully see the difference between your gaming shot, so one way you're trying to get the angles right and you're just trying to hit a kind of intended target compared to the ones where you max out. You turn as far as you can, you swing literally out of your boots as hard as you can. Now what I tend to find with amateurs, this is a generalization, you're all different, but so I've over speed trained for a long time, so the difference between my top end to my gaming end is around two miles an hour. They're really close because I'm now gaming much nearer my top end because what happens is the more you practice at your top end, the more you start realizing you're not less accurate and the more you start realizing you've got so much more to give. Now, when I do this with everyday amateurs, what we find is seven, eight mile an hour difference, huge difference between their top swings down to their gaming swings where they're obviously a bit petrified and swinging in a way where it's so deliberate that they can't put any speed in, which often leads to poorer strikes, less control, weaker shots. So we wanna get that discrepancy between top end down to your gaming end a little closer. I like to see it around five to two mile an hour. So upping that speed at your top end, practicing hitting shots out of your boots in your safe zones, and watching the results, what tends to happen with golfers is, is they start to see is that they've got so much more to give and their relationship to speed doesn't relate to accuracy like they think. And I know some of you are watching this going, I don't believe that, that's ridiculous, I go faster, I go more wayward. Please, just try it. I haven't had a student yet who goes top end down to gaming end and has become way more less accurate. They're like, they, they literally come to me and they message me after people I've done and they like, I still can't believe me trying to swing with this intent of hitting harder is allowing me to hit the ball as straight as I've always hit it. For some people, they even start hitting it straighter. And don't be afraid to push it, really turn, really go. Get the grunts going, that one's gonna turn way left. Look, look at how far left that's going. But I'm upping my swing speeds, I'm upping my ability to put stress on my body, which allows me to, when I come to hit my gaming shots, to put that little bit more stress on my body and be ready for the outcome, which for most golfers is longer and straighter. Hitting the ball longer and straighter is gonna lower your scores. Getting the most out of what you put in is the main point. Little bit of intent in there as well. You're gonna transform how you hit the shot. Now, if you wanna transform how you hit your iron shots, this video is gonna do the same with this one, but give you that consistent iron shot that you're looking for.